Hey guys, what's up? I uh, just want to show you this channel um, that's really been influencing me lately, <clears throat> especially in regards to Gematria. And five years ago, I did make a video about this finding, about Jesus' name in the first word of the Bible, Bereshit, in the beginning, um, using the Paleolithic Hebrew, and then Genesis 2, uh, Elohim. But I, I didn't start actually getting into his stuff till <clears throat> just this week, and it's really incredible. And John Caustic, I think you have a really great channel. Um, I don't know how much you're getting from online versus what's original. Um, and that's something my channel goes into too. Like I'll try and give credit for anything that has original content, um, but also admits that it's got getting its sources from somewhere else. But that's fine. It's all for the you know truth of God. <laughs> Honestly, you know, truth has no copyright. So the original Hebrew has the modern um, rendition, then we got the the actual English um, transfiguration, <laughs> you know, everything, the P and the Pe and the A and the Aleph and all that stuff, Alpha, Omega. Anyway, it also has an ancient symbolic pictorial form, and that's actually as I, I said in another video seven years ago, Hebrew letters are words, so words are sentences. And so that's how we get um, all these deeper meanings. You know, if you spell out Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, in English, it doesn't mean anything. But in the ancient Hebrew, it definitely um, has a deeper meaning. So if we look at Elohim, the first, um, the first name of God that's used in the whole Bible, Genesis 1-1, Elohim. It's, uh, we see the last three letters of 55, which is a perfect triangular number, like right here. The middle three letters are 45, it's a perfect triangular number. And the first three letters, Aleph, Lam, and Hay, <clears throat> is 36. It's like sequential. It's not just random triangular numbers, it's sequential. There's 36, and then the, that's the seventh uh, triangular number. And then 45 is the 8th, 55 is the ninth, as you can see right there. Also, Bereshit um, shows matter, space, and time. God incorporated all the elements into, um, well, all the aspects of reality into the first sentence. It shows the elements later. Okay, let's see. As you can see, Bereshit starts with Bet, Resh, Aleph. Bet is sun. Uh, Resh is spirit, and Abba is um, it's going to be Father. So that's the Holy Trinity. But Bara itself means Son. Bar means Bar Mitzvah, <clears throat> Son of God, excuse me. And Aleph means God. So we can see from the very beginning, strength and God, the very first letter. So anyway, it says Son of God, Bereshit, Son of God, Elohim. So it's saying Son of God twice, Bereshit, Bara. In the beginning, the heavens. Oh, this dude likes his rap music, but so do I, so who cares, right? <laughs> and then God said, let us make man in our image, <clears throat> according to our likeness. And now this is a huge verse for the Trinity, okay? God is one, but he has three different aspects, just like water. Water's a liquid, gas, and a solid. And water, he's the water of life. Uh, but anyway, who is he? The Lord... The Yud, um, as you can see, Yud, He, Vav, right here. Uh, let's, sorry. Uh, let's see. Yud and He, you can see what it is. Uh, each rendition of be and is and was and will be all equals He is right now. <clears throat> so He is and, and was, you know, the beginning and the last, all that kind of stuff. Um, chlorophyll, this is the molecule responsible for converting light to life. It contains 137 atoms. I've shown y'all before in a different video that this guy has not mentioned, John Caustic has not mentioned, um, you know, pi, uh, the tetragrammaton is the speed of light in 137, but that's different. Okay, and even the words, or the letters that are not used in Genesis 1-1, Gimel, Dalet, Zion, Chet, Tet, Kaf, Nun, Samachai, and Fe, and Kaf, <clears throat> Um, equal 411, and that's 137 times 3. So even what he leaves out has meaning, okay? 
um, see Messiah equals 42 <clears throat> in the original Greek for this, and 6 equals man, and 7 is perfection. So Jesus was the only perfect man. If we look at the letter tet, um, it looks like a snake. And as we know, the word Satan um, starts with Samech, you know, <clears throat> right here. Shin, or, sorry, Shin, Tuf, Shin, Tet, and Nun. I apologize. Um, as you can see, Shin equals teeth or destruction. Tet is the serpent. <laughs> and Nun is like a fish or sperm or life. Okay. And this is interesting. This is a graph of each of the letters of the Torah. But as you know, I do believe the Masoretic text is somewhat altered since the Septuagint is what the apostles quoted more so than the Hebrew uh, Masoretic text. So the specific numbers of it, I don't go into because I don't believe it's accurate. But in general, you can see uh, the numbers are very interesting. Tet, which is the serpent, is the least used um, um, letter. Sorry, I said number. In the entire Hebrew alphabet. So that's very interesting. So, when was the first time the term Satan was used in the Bible? First Chronicles 21. And what does Satan add up to? 359. So, of course, First Chronicles chapter 21 is going to be the 359th chapter. Isn't that awesome? So, that is very fascinating, I think. Okay, of course, the Torah is only the five books of Moses, but the whole Old Testament to the Jews is known as the Tanakh, Tuf Nun Dalit. It stands for the Torah, the first five, the Nevi'im, which is the prophets, and the Ketuvim. I actually don't know what that means because I suck, <laughs> but you can see. Speaking of that 359, um, Satan is 359, and he first appears in the 359th chapter, um, <laughs> it, the 359th day in the Gregorian calendar is Christ's Mass, the Baal worship. So that's once again Satan deceiving everyone. And what, this guy knows Christmas is pagan, and it's awesome. Thank you. Finally, he knows Christmas is pagan. He's into ge uh, gematria. He's into the pre-rapture. So it's very interesting. I agree with him on a lot of other stuff as well. Okay, so if we look at the Hebrew letters as symbols, as we showed at the very beginning, the tuf is the cross, vav is the male, resh is the head, <clears throat> and hey means to behold, or like something's going to be revealed. So if we read it backwards, it says, behold, the head man is nailed to a cross. Okay, because Hebrew is right to left, so we read left to right. So there you go. The Torah itself is hiding Jesus, the New Testament. Fascinating. And the ordinate values, um, basically, you know, if Aleph is 1 and Tuf, the very last letter is 22 instead of 400, <clears throat> like in regular Gematria, it's 53 for Torah, and 53 as well for Yeshua, which is Jesus in Hebrew. <clears throat> so they have the same values, so that's two things about the Torah and Jesus. I mean, Gematria is like solid evidence, y'all. These were the seven covenants of God. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just find it very interesting. Not particularly. And the eighth covenant, of course, is Jesus. Um, all that. Messiah and snake actually both equal 359. You know? So in Gematria, um, Jesus, the Messiah, and the snake are, are equal as far as the 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 power Jesus gives the the serpent to send judgment is kind of the point 358 um, I don't know something interesting about that in uh, Greek truth is aletheia which is 64 a perfect square in Hebrew truth is emet and it's 441 which is a perfect square so it's very interesting he points out that <clears throat> truth is always a square. And it, it seems to me as if creation is always a triangle, because Genesis 1-1 is a triangle, okay? And the 153 fish, it's all about birth, whereas truth is uh, the first four-sided object, a square, which is a little more, <clears throat> it gives matter to matter. I don't know. 
anyway, he goes in the in the video Aleph. He goes into a lot of things. Um, uh, Noah um, in Hebrew is Noah, and backwards it equals grace in Hebrew, which is Han. And of course, Noah found favor or grace in the eyes of the Lord. So that's very interesting. The stone <clears throat> um, is going to be Aleph Bet Nun, which is Eben. But as you can see, Aleph is father, the God, God the Father. Bet or Ben equals son. So father and son. And that's the stone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Psalm 118, 22. <clears throat> okay. Well, in Exodus 3.14, which is Pi, of course, um, it's the first time God said his name. So he said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you call, say to the children, I am has sent me unto you. And it's once again bringing to mind the Trinity because it said it three times. Okay? God the Father created everything. Jesus was the flesh, but still God. The only time that's ever happened. And the Holy Spirit is everything after Jesus that we can communicate with on a personal level. <clears throat> and the ordinate values all have to do with the three sevens, because as we know, 37 is everywhere in Genesis 1.1. We've gone into that. Okay, this one's crazy, y'all. If we look at the first verse of the Bible, Bereshit bara Elohim, et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz, you know, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, in the Hebrew, if we um, do it backwards, I don't want to do it now because I think y'all will see it. I want to do it better because there's a specific picture, sorry, that I took. Here it is. Okay, here we go. Thanks for hanging in there with me, y'all. <laughs> This guy covers hours of material. I'm more of a summarizer. So, yeah. So, if we write Genesis 1 1 backwards, so the bet is here instead of here, and it's literally all backwards, um, except it, it's not, it's the words that are backwards in the backwards order. So, Bereshit bara, Bereshit bara. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. It says, if we read it this way, hey is behold. Um, and it says uh, match in Hebrew and Moshe right here, Moses, and then uh, match again and Yah again. So it literally means, behold, this is my match Moses, a match of Yah, God. So that's very interesting. It hides Moses because he's the first savior of the Jews, <laughs> the chosen people, um, backwards in the very first verse. It takes a little bit to comprehend, like, the depth of what it implies. Like, gematria is all about just showing you what it is. But what it implies is a spiritual thing. And you can't understand the spiritual until something changes in you. So you can show math and logic all day long, but it, it doesn't mean anything if you don't know what it's supposed to imply. Okay? So if we see um, I am that I am, the first time God mentions this title, it's 543. <clears throat> And Moses equals 345 in the Hebrew. So just add those two, and it is Jesus, 888, Jesus, in the Greek. It's all connected. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. In 2 Peter 3, 8, we find that. So, of course, in um, Gematria, Aleph is one. And in regular Hebrew normal mathematics, Aleph is also a thousand. So that's interesting. And we can see in the first verse of the Bible, Aleph is shown six times, okay? So the 6,000 years, the prophecy, you know, then God rests the seventh day. That's the new heaven and all that stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if we look at all of God's titles, El, Yah, um, Elohim and Adonai is how Jews say it, but Yahweh, we can see the values are 
31, 15, 86, and 26. Well, the 15th letter is an Aleph. The 26th letter is an Aleph in the entire Bible. The 31st letter is an Aleph, and the 86th letter is an Aleph. So all of God's names, you know, are tied to Aleph, because Aleph means God in Gematria, <laughs> in, in, in the Paleolithic Hebrew um, from the ancient times. Okay, it's all insane. Okay, now let's add up the values of these olives, the 3, 9, 10, and 15, 23, 26, in the first verse, it's 86. And what's 86? Elohim. Bereshi bara Elohim. In the beginning created God. Well, God created, but that's the literal order. This is amazing stuff, y'all. I love this guy. I cannot wait to watch every single video. <laughs> um, let's see. If you literally spell out uh, Aleph, it stands for God in the mouth of El. Pei, Aleph, Lamed, Pei, Aleph. So Aleph is strength, Lamed is the shepherd's crook, and Pei is mouth. So from the mouth of God, Aleph. It's all connected, okay? Now we can go into that later. I really like this. Um, Aleph is made up of Hebrew letters, two Yuds and a Vav. So we have God above. And Jesus below, the two gods, uh, okay? And not two gods, but the two um, aspects of God. And the vav is bent over. You see, it's standing straight up here, but it's bent over, you know, being humble and bowing down. So the only way to, to understand God is to bow down to the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit. Cool, huh? <laughs> you know? It's not just cool, it's just amazing. Psalm 119 it all starts with Aleph, but you wouldn't get that in the KJV translation. The virtuous wife is all alphabetical. Aleph, Bet, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Vav, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yif, Av, Tav, Final, Tav, Lama, Mem, Mem, Samachai, Pei, Pei, Kaf, Resh, Shin, Tav. Sorry, I just wanted to show off. But you don't get this stuff in the English, okay? The Word of God is supposed to be in its original languages for a reason. Lamentations 1. Alphabet, bet, gimel, dal, hey, you know, it's the Hebrew alphabet, you know, and how are we going to get these little codes in our stupid modern Bible studies, you know, study Bibles, you know? Look at this again. This is the Moses in Genesis 1 1 backwards. This is probably the most impressed I've been by this guy. Thank you, John Kosick, for this specific. After all the 100 million things you showed us, thank you for this one. I love it. It's so good. Um, let's see. This is just me and my own gematria. Looking up matrix and uh, Pharaoh. Uh, pay. Uh, let's see. Pay is mouth and Ra Pharaoh is evil. So the Pharaoh is basically the mouth of evil, and that's very interesting because we are under the burdens of Egypt. Okay. Now the Jews were thinking that the Messiah should come from the house of Levi, but Jesus came from even further back, the house of Melchizedek, okay, which is Psalm 110 and Hebrews 5 both mention. So the Jews didn't think he was the Messiah, but he, he's from the, according to the order of Melchizedek, okay, he's not, he, he's further back than the Levi, which is very interesting, I thought. Now let's see, I love this verse. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, then your thoughts. That's God speaking, y'all. You know how genius he is? We have, he's not even, he created genius. Okay, truth is emet, and God is Aleph. So if we take away the Aleph, we just have met, death. That's very interesting. This is all fascinating to me. I'm just being re-interested in it. Um, as we could see, Exodus 2.10 she named him Moses and said, because I drew him out of the water. And what does Moshe mean? It, it means, you know, a hand of the waters. So, if we look at Hashemayim, the heavens, in the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, it's Moshe backwards, as we saw, and also Yud and Mem. Yud stands for hand, and Mem stands for water. Okay? So, Moses being lit, drew out of the water. The word heavens... In Bereshit, Bar Elohim, and Hashemayim, that are, it's Genesis 1-1, is hiding Moses being taken out of the water. 
And of course, I love that verse because it's two ten my birthday, and I'm the water bearer Aquarius. Anyway, we look at um, the first uh, word of the Bible, Bereshit. Uh, Brit is covenant, it's the exterior of the words, and fire is ish or ash. So, in the beginning, he's actually hiding the covenant of the fire. Okay, obviously the new covenant. Okay, we saw this before um, years ago I showed you Aleph is God Lamed is shepherd He is uh, beholder to receive Yud is um, <clears throat> workings or hand and Mem is water so the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he, um, he leads me beside still waters you know <laughs> God's name hides Psalm 23 and Psalm 23 knew about it Oh, here's the four elements. So we have, as we saw, Aish is fire. So now we have the element fire. Um, and then Hesh is sky. And Mayim is water. <clears throat> so air, water, and of course Haaretz, the earth. Earth, water, air, fire. There you go. He knows the elements. Sorry he didn't have plasma in there, though. Whatever. <laughs> okay, let me go to a different one here. This one's kind of interesting. I'm not 100% on board with it, but it's cool. This represents the, you know, there's seven words in the, the first verse of the Bible. So there's 7,000 years, you know, metaphorically that we're going through. First is in the beginning. The second is God fills or flattens the earth. Then God chooses a people. Then the next thousand years is Jesus comes the first time. And then he's in the heavens. And then he returns. And then the millennial reign of Yeshua, which is, you know, eternity, basically. It's not the thousand, and literally a thousand years, it's the rest of eternity. Okay, if we take all of the, um, <clears throat> and if we take every other word, it's going to be 1690. And of course, that's a, a square, not a square, a hexagram. And that's very interesting. So all of it together is 2701, which is a triangle, as I've shown a hundred times. Uh, but if we take every other, or the odd number of words, it's going to be, you know, a hexagram times 10. It's fascinating and perfect. Okay. 37 is used a gajillion times. You could take many of these. There's 23 different combinations of just these seven words that are a multiple of 37. Okay. And of course, if you add all of them, it's 37 times 73. Okay. Um, so, but, but the thing is, the t in the 23 combinations, the God uses Bereshit 12 times, and he used Bara 12 times, and Elohim, Ed Hashemai Bedar, it uses each word exactly 12 times in the 23 combinations of 37 of multiples. Does, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but once you get it, it's just like, holy crap, this is incredibly divine. It's real. Okay. The word Shekor. Shikr is um, equal, means falsehood, but equals 600. And six, of course, is the number of man. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. And God formed man. For some reason, there's two Yuds right here. Okay. Vayit Sar. So Yud is actually a hand. So what happens when God... Um, formed animals. There's only one yud, one hand. But when he took the time for man, he took both hands. You know, gematria can be used symbolically like that as well. It's so fascinating. So here's the thing. Um, you know how God created, you know, basically chemistry and the atoms and all the materials that we use in this world? Well, he also hid the, the actual terms, the biblical terms. He, he hid them using equal letter spacing, okay? So wheat, you know, every fifth letter in this order is hidden. And then vine, dense forest, okay? Like th these are the chapters that are specifically dealing with the creation of earth. And he's hiding the names of these biblically named items in the verses. So grape and it, uh, dates, nuts, acacia, cedar, bramble, poplar, you know, that's all a fig, pomegranate, aloe, tamarisk, oak, cassia, almond, 
hazelnut, thornbush, terebinth, this is all being hidden in the verses about creation of the world, okay? So who knows what else is hidden in this kind of weird way, y'all? Citrus, olive, gopher, <laughs> yeah, it's all there. And uh, uh, Noah, when he built the ark, he was made out of gopher wood. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so Adam, Adam lived um, 930 years, and David lived 70 years. And um, Jesus, the Mosiah, Messiah, is going to reign a thousand years. So that's kind of interesting. Oh yeah, here we go. See, so when the Lord formed the beast, it's just one yud. But when he formed the man, there's two yuds. One hand and two hands. Okay. He took the time with us. All right. And even like the term for dog, kelev. Kel means all, and lev means heart. So that's what dogs are. They're all heart. Literally. That's, that's, that's man's best friend. And Gematria <laughs> explains it. Isn't that fascinating, y'all? Um, like a digger is kofer, flower is horish, and scruff of neck is goreth. So scruff of neck, like a long neck, giraffe, goreth. A plower, like a, a horse. And the digger, like a gopher. A kofer. <laughs> it's crazy, y'all. The first Adam and Jesus have these in common. They're both the Son of God, born by a miraculous birth. They're put to sleep. And their side is open, like Adam's rib. And then Jesus was stabbed on the cross, of course. And then wakes up with the bride, Eve and the bride of Christ. So many parallels to these characters. So, I mean, you know... I say characters, but it's, you know, the Bible. Adam loved his bride. Jesus loves his bride so much that he willingly took on her sin so that they wouldn't be separated. Adam said, okay, yeah, I'll take it just because you say so. And Jesus is going to do that for our sin. We are the brides. We are Eve. That's awesome. So interesting. This channel is really good, y'all. So with God... Um, when he created man, he barad man. He created man. But with women, he fashioned, or veyiben. He uses a different method of creating a woman than he does man. He created man, bara, but he fashioned woman, veyiben. So that's kind of interesting, uh, the male-female dichotomy, the yin-yang, the balance, you know. You know how God says he's light and there's no darkness in him, literally? Even though he creates evil in Isaiah 45 and 7, he's still the truth. Just because something's evil doesn't mean it's not true. Look, the flame has no shadow. The flame itself, the light, casts no shadow. And I never thought of it like that before, so it's really awesome. Even the Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, I would say that in Hebrew school because I grew up Jewish. This is like the main Jewish idiom. This is... This is the first true um, um, what do you call it? Not poly monotheism, I apologize. So even the Shema, even though it says the Lord is one, it uses the Lord's name three times. The Trinity. So it even says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It's three times, dude. Lord God, Lord. That's a <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go into this one later because it's pi. You need to just you need to look into that one. If you look at the term snake, nachash, it's just a different order. He the letter N and then K and then S. Just flip it around, snake. Okay, it's kind of like the Tower of Babel when all the words were mixed up. Okay. So, of course, in, in, the, in the garden, the tree was good for food. The lust of the flesh is a delight to the eyes. The lust of the eyes and was desirable to make one wise, the pride of life. So, of course, 1 John 2.16 warns of that. Those are the three things. Okay. Well, this goes into 3.15, Genesis. I want to go into that later because it's very interesting. 
Um, but yeah, this guy's awesome. Thanks for sticking with me. If you want hours of more material, go to John Caustic. He's on my featured channels now. I think he deserves at least that much. Take it easy.